Hey guys, welcome back to Ari the Stag. TR Tony here out in the front garden and I'm um, just working on the stag this afternoon. Had a bit of an issue. I'm feeling quite cheesy pleased with myself now because uh, I've had a bit of success and I was really, really worried about it. I'll talk about a, bit, a little bit more about that in a moment. Uh, but the time that you'll see this video, I'm hoping to be up at the Silverstone Classic next weekend. It's the uh, end of July, beginning of August. So hopefully seeing a few of you up there. So forgive me if it's a fairly short video this weekend, but um, just wanted to put something out there. So at least we've got it to uh, continue sharing the Classics dream and so on. Anyway, um, the issue was me being able to start the car in neutral, not park. And it's been a problem I've had with this car for quite some time. Um, and I know that many of you also have a similar experience. So when the uh, auto is in park, uh, I just couldn't crank the engine over. And uh, when I went to neutral, then it would do. And I understand this was to do with the um, uh, switch that uh, resides within the tunnel on the stag. So let me just um, show you that and that I found the problem and I've also resolved it after a bit of a scare. But uh, without further ado, let's go have a quick look. So as ever, working on the um, driveway at a weekend uh, is always good fun. As you can see, we have a almost exploded diagram of a Triumph stag with the bonnet open and uh, doors. Um, I'll just walk you through what I've done here. There was um, some issues under the engine bay. I was a bit concerned about these pipes here being just free. Uh, they are actually breather pipes, but I was concerned about them just being loose, especially if we've got a big journey next week. So I've, I've, I've put some new Jubilee clips on there and uh, I'm sure that will see us well for next week. Um, and it's all about being prepared for that journey up to Silverstone, which is a good old hike, as we know. Now, um, let's wander in here. The inhibitor switch, as it's called, is a function that uh, it's a switch that helps you um, such that you can't start it in drive. Basically, the worst thing you could do with an automatic car uh, would be to start it in drive. And uh, if for whatever reason you're out of the car, then a good chance the car could whiz up the high street and do some serious damage. So on this particular 77 Stag, um, I'm quite lucky because as you can see here, we actually got an inspection plate that I took off last night before all the storms came. And um, that's a very handy panel to have because if you look at the manual, the Stag owner's manual, it tells you that you've got to almost take all the gearbox up, well, drop it all down, remove various things under the, and, and get it from un, under under the, the blinking thing, which is um, a lot of work. Whereas actually here, and I'll show you on another gearbox I've got in the garage in a minute, um, you can see the inhibitor switch. And this is a new one that I've put on, is actually mounted here. And uh, very simply, you've got a couple of wires uh, don't ask me to tell you which ones do which. I'm not an electrician and uh, or an automotive sparky, but there is a little um, adjuster nut here that helps you get the right depth and actually goes into the gearbox. You can just see the Borg Warner um, plate and serial number there. So I've wired it all in now um, for the second time and that went very well. Here's the original, if I can just show you the original. And all appeared okay with this except for those that are really observant, you'll see I've only got three terminals. So somehow this was intermittently working. Sometimes it would start and start in park, other times it wouldn't. And um, the actual tab, because initially I was just trying to tighten up the, um, the connectors because these connectors here were fairly loose uh, on the spade terminal. So I just thought well, if I nip them up, perhaps that's the reason why they're waggling about and they're not, they're not working, but um, they're problem soon revealed itself when this bit of a tang here had actually broken off the body of this old one and uh, so this was I guess the reason why it was working intermittently. So I'm very very pleased we've um, wired all this in and um, I'll show you in just a second where it is on the gearbox uh, on one I prepared earlier as in the old Blue Peter fashion. Bear with me. Now, somewhere at the back of our old garage, which is due to be collapsed soon, and you can see the problem we had actually, um, quite a bit of damp coming in there, which is why we had to build a new one. So this one will be scheduled for dem demolition fairly soon. Um, and I'll just show you what we've got here. We've got a Borg Warner uh, gearbox, actually with one of the uh, inhibitor switches still fixed into it. And you can just see, there it is. So that's the context. We're just looking through the, the uh, inspection hatch there a minute ago. And um, I think you can see that's it there, and uh, that's the one that we've been replacing. You could argue I could have taken the one off here and used it, but I preferred to order one from James Paddock, 
um, who I have to say were brilliant. I ordered it four o'clock on a Friday pretty much and it was here by midday Saturday so that is great service. I thoroughly support James Paddock. I think they're a brilliant outfit and the guy was really friendly, the guy I spoke to. So, so that's the context. There's your cereal plate and that's the inhibitor switch that we've just taken out and changed over. So that's it. And then, yes, as you can see, we have two gearboxes and the plan is for Andy the Clutch to give us uh, one new Borg Warner 35. He's just asked me to clarify which ones I want for UNY 49M. The one that we did have, which was refurbished by him, and you can look back at an old video of when he delivered that uh, 18 months ago, is currently in this one. We've just been looking at UES 591S because the engine, a big pardon, the gearbox packed up, as you remember, when we first bought the car. So there we are. So let's go back to the car and I'll show you what happened. Forgive all the mess, I'll have to tidy that up in a bit, but there's the old um, inhibitor switch there languishing on the passenger seat flooring. Uh, and coming back to the gear lever, um, this is in park, and this was a problem. Whenever I tried to start it in park, there was just no turnover at all. Occasionally it might work after you've been out for a bit, driving around, and, and so what I had to do was to put it into neutral there um, to then be able to start it. And I know these um, guides are a little bit ambiguous, but that is in neutral there. Then it would start, then I'd have to put it into park, um, just for safety reasons, because obviously didn't want it um, freewheeling and occasionally if I didn't have the handbrake on it would start rolling down a hill so not ideal but I do think this is a very common problem that a lot of stag owners have from what I can see online so hopefully this video will help other people to get over the issue. Um, Andy the clutch reckoned that I needed just a test when I was starting it on the ignition here that um, to make sure it wasn't uh, just a selector problem because these uh, can be adjusted down below underneath the car you've got some adjusting nuts in there that uh, if I as I was starting I should push the selector uh, lever forward which I did um, and if it would have started then it's more likely a selector problem rather than the inhibitor switch there so I did all that but it didn't there was no change at all so I'm glad that I've had that advice around he's a really good guy and highly recommend him if ever you need a auto gearbox he's um he does them in his sleep so he's a, he's a good guy i put the um i'll put his contact details in the description for the video so you can see up but um yeah so hopefully now <laughs> uh, sort of all <laughs> just see what happens um and uh, back to the ignition let's just turn it on um we've got a little bit of choke there we're in park and fingers crossed there you go first time how's that so I'm well chuffed that that has now happened and we have a car that is serviceable and not going to let us down when we get to um, Silverstone. That'll be the last thing uh, just before the parade lap, knowing our luck. So simple little things, but hugely problematic if you don't know what they are, um, but quite simply fixed. So I'll just turn the engine off, save fuel, and um, I'll just show you finally in the um, inspection hatch there a mistake that I made and um, it's one that we could all make I'm sure. All right, bear with me. Okay, so let's just go back to where we were looking at earlier and um, just pull the carpet back. It's pretty simple to get rid of that. Um, as I say, here's the old inhibitor switch. Now, um, I'm not an electrician. There's no obvious sign as to which wire should go into which terminal, except that on the old one, you can see that the uh, spade terminals here are slightly wider than the spade terminals here. So being a bit of an amateur, I it was in this position in the car and uh, basically the white, or was it yellow, white and red wires here were on the diagonally opposite. All right, so, and those were on the, the thin spade terminals this way. And then the fat spade terminals here were uh, connected up with the green and yellow wires here and here. So that's how I deducted how to do it. Now, the issue was when I first did it, um, I put it in, wired it all up, and I actually did it 180 degrees wrong. So nothing happened at all. I, I thought I was going to have a crisis and not go to Silverstone at all. But um, the issue was I've just had some patience, um, turned it through uh, 180 degrees and put the wires back in again in the new position. And that was the magic trick and did the job. Now on the old one, just to point out, the um, this kind of nut that uh, screws it into the casing is quite important. You've got to have a certain distance between 
here and here because that, as I understand it, uh, feeds into the gearbox. Don't ask me how, but that stops it from um, uh, starting in Cordova. But that distance is kind of quite important. So with a new one, all you've got is an adjustable nut. You can see there's some thread above that goes to the base. Now that uh, needed to be spun out. So I literally put one next to the other and made sure that the, the distance between this one and the tip was the same for both. Even though this one is permanent, that one can be adjusted. So I just wound the um, adjuster nut down so there's enough threads above and should be roughly the right depth into the uh, gearbox itself. But um, there you go. And uh, so I'm chuffed to bits and uh, have avoided hopefully a problem next weekend. Um, embarrassed to say that uh, yes, we have a mixed colour car as you can really see here now. This was definitely inky yellow when it first started out but um, luckily you can't see it under the carpet. Um, this does need some bodywork and some spraying and Alan will be tackling that shortly because it's um, it just needs a little bit of TRC but hopefully mechanically now we're starting to get somewhere near where we need to be albeit we are in twin tone. Um, yes <laughs> bright red and yellow there you go. And there we are all panelled back up and uh, sorted. So job done. All right guys, so uh, as I said, I'm very, very, very pleased that this car now starts in park and also in neutral if I really want to, but obviously you want to start in park really. Um, we could have left it how it was because it was working before with that wire hanging off, which really wasn't desirable. Who knows when it would have let us down, but uh, we've done it, we've fixed it. Uh, seems to all be okay. So I'm hoping now to be at the Silverstone Classic next weekend and uh, meeting many of you on the Stag Owners Club stand and uh, hopefully doing the parade lap on, our, on the Sunday as well. Let's hope the weather stays nice for that. And by the way, if any of you see us uh, whilst we're traveling around, feel free to say, Harry the Stag. That'd be great to meet with you and share the classic stream together. Good, okay, well that's about it for this week. Thanks for all your support and uh, ongoing uh, comments, uh, always very welcome. Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And also uh, we have the Saturday sockets on a weekend, as well as if you want one, you can have an Ari the Stag badge of honor. Just go to the website and sign up for it and we'll send you one free of charge anywhere in the world. So it's all good fun. Okay, well have a great week and uh, we'll see you online on Ari the Stag very soon. Cheers for now, bye. <laughs>